Huajeng Bridge, China's mega project that makes the Golden Gate look obsolete not in Shanghai nor in Beijing. In the rugged, lesser-known mountains of Guizhou Province, China has just completed a bridge that has left the global bridge-building industry speechless. The Huajiang Bridge is not just a transportation structure. It is a bold proclamation in steel and concrete aimed directly at the heart of Western infrastructure thinking. What they once deemed impossible, China has quietly turned into reality. While the United States debates how to repair its 45,000 aging bridges, China has built a bridge that spans rivers, mountains, and imagination itself. A structure so grand it makes the iconic Golden Gate Bridge seem modest in every way, from height and main span to construction technology. What's most staggering? It wasn't completed after 20 years of planning, but in just a few years of construction. And it doesn't just serve vehicles, it serves national image, domestic technology, and strategic influence across borders. Join Top 10 Discoveries official as we dive deep into the story behind this bridge to uncover why Huajiang is not just a structure, but China's latest challenge to the entire developed world. If the Golden Gate was the golden symbol of 20th century America, Huajiang is how China redefines what a mega project means in the 21st century. It's not just a bridge, it's a milestone that shatters limits of engineering, geography, and time. 625 meters. That's the distance from the Huajiang Bridge Deck to the riverbed below. Nearly 10 times the height from water to deck of the Golden Gate, 67 meters. And even surpassing the Eiffel Tower, 300 meters. 1,420 meter main span, outstripping the Golden Gate central span, 1,280 meters. It ranks among the longest suspension bridge spans globally, surpassing many in Japan, the US, and South Korea. 2,890 meters total length, longer than the famed San Francisco Bay Bridge. Yet what truly astonishes the global engineering community isn't just its size, it's the construction speed. From laying the foundation in January 2022 to the projected completion in June 2025, just 3.5 years. By contrast, the Golden Gate, a marvel of its time, took four years to build with a far smaller scale. About material volume, the steel framework weighs 22,000 tons, equivalent to over three Eiffel Towers combined, a figure not meant for nations accustomed to building bridges over plains or coastlines. This is engineering for those who can span mountains and gorges, like China. And all of this was done with an investment of only about 283 million US dollars, a modest figure compared to similar construction costs in the US where a bridge of this scale could consume over 1 billion US dollars just for planning, legal, and bidding processes. What about the height of the bridge towers? Each Huajiang Tower is 262 meters, 860 feet tall, surpassing even the peak of the Golden Gate Tower, 227 meters. With a total height from the bottom of the gorge to the top of the tower of 887 meters, it is clear this is the highest suspension bridge ever built. The Huajing Bridge doesn't just connect two sides of a chasm, it bridges two worlds, one that believed only the West could build enduring steel icons. Building a 600-meter high bridge is already a feat, but constructing it across a windy, complex mountain gorge with the risk of magnitude 9 earthquakes and ensuring it operates safely for 100 years that's a technological statement of strategic magnitude. The Huajiang Bridge is not merely a civil engineering project. It's a symbol of China's era of sovereign infrastructure engineering. The standout feature in Huajiang's design is its dual load-bearing cable suspension system, employing a symmetrical double-sided design to optimize force distribution from the deck to the two towers. Unlike the Golden Gate's classic single parabolic main cable with vertical suspenders, Huajing features specialized lateral anti-sway cables, enabling the structure to withstand gusts up to category 17, over 200 kilometers per hour, equivalent to a super typhoon. Meanwhile, an active damping system restores balance within seconds after seismic or wind-induced vibrations. According to the China Bridge and Road Institute, this design was tested with simulations of a magnitude nine earthquake, like the 2008 Sichuan quake, and maintain deflection within acceptable limits. A lesser known fact, 
Much of Hua Zhang's high altitude steel assembly wasn't done by human workers, but by rope climbing robots and AI guided cranes. At over 600 meters, air pressure and winds make manual construction deadly risky. Thus, crews use smart robots on mobile tracks, capable of moving along cables and aligning steel beams with millimeter precision. The central control system employs deep learning AI, processing real-time data on terrain, wind, and vibrations to ensure hoisting and assembly occur within safe windows of just minutes per wind cycle. Even more remarkable, Huajang isn't just a steel structure, it's a living entity fitted with over 1,200 smart sensors along the deck, cables, and foundation linked to a central monitoring system. These sensors measure real-time deflection, the natural curvature of the deck under load, material temperature variations to adjust for expansion, micro vibrations from heavy trucks or minor quakes to detect structural fatigue early. All data is synchronized 24 seven with danger threshold alerts sent directly to the operations center in Guizhou. Per the project management team, the system can detect hidden structural damage three to six months earlier than traditional periodic inspections. Moreover, Huajing's entire steel structure uses ultra high strength alloy capable of bearing 1.5 times the load of European suspension bridge standards. Its exterior coating employs nanotechnology to resist salt corrosion and UV damage, ensuring a 100 year design lifespan despite the harsh climate of Southwest China's mountains. This is a leap forward, especially when many iconic US suspension bridges like the Golden Gate require constant maintenance with annual upkeep budgets of 25 million US dollars. When engineering, automation, and data are integrated into every centimeter of its structure, Huajang isn't just a bridge. It's a symbol of how China is reprogramming modern infrastructure, while much of the world remains focused on preserving last century's icons. Looking at China's map, many might wonder, why build a world's tallest suspension bridge in a remote place like Guizhou instead of Beijing, Shanghai, or Shenzhen? The answer lies in a uniquely Chinese strategy, blending domestic development with calculated geopolitical ambition. Just a decade ago, Guizhou was among China's poorest provinces, with per capita income 40% below the national average, treacherous terrain, and barely developed transport infrastructure. Yet by 2025, Guizhou leads the world in the number of tall bridges. Over 50% of the world's highest bridges are in this province, with many ranking in the global top 10 for height, span, and construction techniques. What happened? The Chinese government chose Guizhou as a comprehensive infrastructure laboratory where the latest bridge and road technologies are deployed. From suspension and cable state bridges to mountain highways and ultra long tunnels. Building the Huajing Bridge wasn't just about showing off engineering. It's an economic tool in China's growth model. With exports slowing, Beijing has shifted focus to stimulating domestic consumption and developing remote regions. According to China's Ministry of Transport, every one CNY invested in mountain region transport infrastructure generates 1.6 to 2.3 CNY in GDP growth over the next five years. With the new highway crossing the Huajiang Bridge, travel time between districts like Luji and Anlong drops from 70 minutes to just one to two minutes. Freight transport, tourism, and logistics expand exponentially, spurring real estate, services, tourism, and light industry booms. Guizhou, once an economic backwater, is now becoming a logistics launchpad for Southwest China. Guizhou's strategic role isn't just domestic. On the broader economic map, it's a vital link in the corridor connecting China to ASEAN. The Huajiang Bridge is part of the Guiyang and Long Yunnan Laos Thailand Highway potentially extending to southern seaports via the north-south corridor. This route cuts freight transport time from China to Bangkok, Vientiane, and even Singapore to days, compared to one to two weeks by sea. Beyond that, modern bridges like Hua Jiang are prerequisites for high-speed logistics, from refrigerated containers to precision tech components. In other words, the Hua Jiang Bridge is a critical brick in China's dream of connecting the New World overland directly competing with Western-controlled maritime trade routes. 
While the world marvels at Huazhang's height, length, or construction speed, Beijing sees it as a dual-edged sword, a tool to uplift poor regions, and a spear-piercing geographic barriers to connect directly to ASEAN and beyond. To engineers, the Huazhang Bridge is a marvel, but to strategists in Beijing, it's a razor-sharp soft power tool, quietly extending beyond Southwest China's rugged terrain to Africa, Southeast Asia, South Asia, and even Latin America. Over the past two decades, China has quietly built a unique form of soft power, not through films, books, or media, but through bridges, roads, and unthinkable structures. Huajing Bridge, with a height of over 600 meters, a main span exceeding 1,400 meters, and a construction time of just over three years, is not just a domestic super project. It's a reference model for international contracts China pursues under the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. In Pakistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Myanmar, when governments need a bridge to span mountains, deep rivers, or complex terrain, they don't turn to European or American firms. They turn to China. Because Hua Jiang is living proof of unmatched execution, not just on paper, but in the field. Hua Jiang embodies advances in materials, 22,000 tons of ultra-strong steel, construction techniques, AI-controlled high-altitude robots, and regional infrastructure coordination. These factors help China win major bridge and road contracts in Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia, where cost, speed, and practicality are paramount. In Kenya, the Nairobi Expressway Bridge, funded, built, and operated by a Chinese firm, was completed ahead of schedule. In Bangladesh, the six kilometer, 3.6 billion USD Padma Bridge is another product of Chinese engineering. In Indonesia, the recently opened Jakarta-Bandung high-speed rail with dozens of bridges spanning rivers and mountains bears the mark of engineers who worked in Guizhou. Huajiang isn't just a structure, it's a living catalog for China's infrastructure export industry. Meanwhile, in Washington, bridges are a budget burden. According to the American Society of Civil Engineers 2023 report, 42,000 U.S. bridges are in poor condition, needing upgrades or replacement. In contrast, Guizhou alone plans to build over 1,000 bridges taller than 100 meters by 2030, more than all such bridges in Europe combined. The gap isn't in technology, but in strategic resolve, and the Huajing Bridge is the most compelling evidence. While the U.S. debates maintenance budgets, China has erected a structure that could become the 21st century's icon a bridge spanning a chasm, but also the gap in strategic vision. Huajing doesn't just connect two cliffs, it links China's ambition to the global market. On the other side of the globe, Americans might easily overlook news of a bridge rising in remote Guizhou, China. But for those who understand the nature of infrastructure power, it's impossible to dismiss. Huajing is not just a transport structure, it's a manifesto a display of engineering, construction speed, and mastery over extreme terrain that no Western nation has yet matched. While the U.S. engages in prolonged debates over infrastructure budgets, with over 46,000 bridges classified as structurally deficient, China has built a bridge spanning a 600-meter deep gorge in under four years. While Washington grapples with federal budget approval cycles, Beijing has turned a remote valley into a symbol of modern industrial might. The bigger concern is that China isn't just building bridges for itself. It's reshaping the global bridge construction market. With Huajiang's expertise, China is aggressively securing contracts in Africa, Southeast Asia, and even South America, regions where the U.S. once held sway through technical aid and development investments. As each bridge rises like a soft power broadcast tower, China isn't just connecting geography, it's expanding strategic influence. The U.S., once the global leader in infrastructure engineering with icons like the Golden Gate and Brooklyn Bridge, now faces a serious question. Can it still compete with China's end-to-end -end design, manufacture, build, complete model executed with increasing efficiency? If it doesn't find an answer soon, it may watch the technical standards it once set be redefined by arrival from the East. Thus, Huajiang isn't just Guizhou's story. It's a signal that the infrastructure race is reaching new heights. 
where engineering, speed, and execution are the new battlegrounds of global power. If the U.S. doesn't take this seriously, the map of 21st century iconic bridges may soon be painted in one dominant color, red. Huajang is not the finish line, it's the starting point. A bridge spanning a 625 meter deep gorge, but more crucially, it bridges China's engineering prowess with its globalizing ambition. With every anchor bolt and suspension cable, China is building not just physical infrastructure, but the capacity to commercialize complex terrain bridge building technology. Because if you can build a bridge in Huajiang, where cliffs are sheer, winds howl at 120 kilometers per hour, and quakes hit magnitude nine, you can build anywhere, from Nepal's passes to the Amazon's valleys. Exporting bridge engineering, a new strategic industry, design from China's top bridge and road research institutes, materials, ultra-strong steel forged in smelting hubs in Hubei and Jilin. Workforce, thousands of engineers, technicians, and coordinators who've executed hundreds of projects from Yunnan to Kenya. All are ready to form a complete tech package for export and BRI projects, where bridges aren't just structures, but symbols of trust and soft connectivity between China and global partners. From 2013 to now, China has supported over 13,000 kilometers of railways and thousands of bridges abroad, mainly in Asia and Africa. So is China's gaze turning to the Western Hemisphere? As Latin America faces infrastructure funding shortages with crumbling bridge and road systems in Brazil, Bolivia, and Peru, will the next Chinese-built bridge rise in the Andes? Or perhaps a bridge across the Amazon, linking BRI's extended routes from the Atlantic to the Pacific? While other nations wrestle with proposals, China builds bridges and turns them into reality. If you think Huajiang is the pinnacle, you may be mistaken. For China, this is just the first step. What do you think of the Huajiang Bridge? Where do you think China will build next? Share your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to Top 10 Discoveries Official to explore more mega projects quietly reshaping the 21st century.